For this week's video, I want to talk about a bad study habit that we always want to try to avoid. So this will be applicable to the FE exam, PE exam, MCAT exam, and really anything you're trying to learn. So what is this bad study habit? So it might arise in a scenario that I'm about to describe now. So let's say you have a brand new practice problem. So you're reading that problem statement and you have a decent idea of what you're given. So let's say you're given the friction factor, the velocity, a pressure uh, at a point in the system, the flow rate, and so on. So you have a good idea of what you're given and you note that down. And also, you know what you want to find. So maybe you want to find the velocity at the exit or maybe the flow rate at the exit. So you know what you're given, you know what you want to find. Then you go into that solution. So let's say for this problem, you know the Bernoulli equation is likely applicable. So you get that Bernoulli equation from the FE handbook and you write it down. Then slowly you begin plugging numbers in. So let's say you plug in the unit weight. Let's say you know the pressure at some point. Maybe you know the velocity. But when you look at the Bernoulli equation, you realize there's just too many unknowns. Maybe you have two unknowns, three unknowns, and you just don't know where to go from there. You're stuck. So now the real question is, what do you do? Bad study habit. You immediately go into that practice booklet or practice exam and you look at the solution. So you look at where you got stuck. You're like, okay, this makes sense. I see why I got stuck. Then they did that step. They found the flow rate, found the head loss. Then they got the answer. Or maybe you're doing this through a practice video. You look at someone else's solution, their steps, their video solution. You're like, okay, they did that next, did that. Then they got the answer. Then you decide, okay, let's move on to the next practice question. And that is going to be the bad study habit. And this is going to be passive learning. It's not active learning. You're doing passive learning. And this would, this is what ultimately leads to something called the illusion of competence. So truthfully, this is something I still do as well. And to an extent, I'm still trying to unlearn it. So I would say I picked up on this bad study habit in my undergraduate studies. So let's say it's late at night. I have a bunch of homework questions from different classes. And I just, while I'm solving this homework question, I just get stuck. So immediately my brain is like, go look at that textbook solution. Go just watch that video solution. Or go check it. Or maybe just hit up a friend and ask him, hey, send me a picture and look at their solution copy it and just move on to the next homework question and that right there wasn't really helping me learn and it was just a bad habit that i developed over time by just looking at the video solution or maybe by just passively watching someone else do a video solution is not an effective way of retaining information especially when we're trying to retain that information for the long term. Instead, anytime we get stuck, we should try to accept that natural struggle that comes with anything new we're learning. In fact, this struggle is the biggest indicator that we're beginning to ask new questions. So this is when we're asking new questions and we're just trying to see why we got stuck. We're tossing things around. So maybe it's the problem statement we didn't really read good enough or maybe we just read it too fast and did not understand that problem statement. Or maybe it's the application of the equation. Let's say the Bernoulli equation, we did not really know how to apply it. Or possibly it's the head loss, we did not understand how the head loss is applied in the Bernoulli equation. Also possibly it's the pressure, maybe we didn't understand how the pressure and the velocity is related on both sides of the Bernoulli equation. So at the end of the day, this is an important stage in your learning where you're struggling, where you're asking questions, where you're building associations between different variables, and ultimately, you're trying to see the big picture. With that big picture, we're absolutely guaranteeing progress. So now, we can probably go back and redo that same practice question. So here, what's essentially involved is recalling what we learned in the struggle stage. So remember, during that stage, we got stuck. We we're trying to see why we got stuck. Did we make some mistakes? Did we make a unit conversion mistake? Or did we not really understand the overall concept behind the application of the equation? Or maybe we didn't understand the overall concept of the problem statement. What was the problem statement asking? That was all in that struggle stage. 
asking questions, trying to build associations, and so on. So then when we redo that practice problem, we're going to recall naturally what we learned from that stage. So we're going to recall what we learned and we're going to try to recreate our own solution. So this is our own solution. We're not looking at no one else's solution. It's going to be our own solution. And with that solution, you're likely to get that correct answer. And also note with that solution, it's going to be applicable to many other questions similar to that same concept or problem that's tested. Please remember that solutions are still important. What we're specifically picking on here is the passive learning where anytime we get stuck, we immediately go to that solution. So we go to that solution, look over it, and we tell ourselves, okay, this stuff makes sense, makes sense, I understand this, then we just move on. Or we do that with a video solution where we're just passively sitting there and watching someone else do the video, where we're not actually struggling through these practice questions, tossing things around, asking questions, and so on. So solutions are important, especially when you're trying to check your work. But the best way to make use of these solutions is probably to do this. So let's say again, you have that practice question, you got stuck, and here, don't immediately go into that solution. Give it maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Try to maybe research the concept, research the equation, and just try to ask questions. Try to look for mistakes. Do that for about 10 to 15 minutes. And if you get somewhere, that's excellent. You can keep going and hopefully get the final answer, get, uh, arrive at an answer. But if you're still stuck and you're not getting anywhere after that 15 minutes, go back to the solution, video solution or the book solution, but be very careful and only go back to that specific line or that specific step where you got stuck. So see the line there and see if it makes sense to you. Close the book and try to continue your own solution. And that is how I would make best use of the solutions. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I really hope you found it helpful. So just remember, most of us probably have this bad habit. So it just takes time to slowly unlearn it. And honestly, for something like the FE, you can't really perfect everything. So let's just try to focus on getting enough sleep, getting enough rest, refreshing our minds, and taking each practice problem one at a time.